The Los Angeles Lakers have earned their place in history as one of the NBA's most storied franchises. Their legacy includes 14 NBA championships and a long line of legends who have carried on the Lakers' winning tradition. But the team's most celebrated run of success came in the 1980s with five NBA titles in nine years. The Lakers have won it again. At the heart of it all was Magic Johnson, orchestrating the flashy style of play that came to be known as Showtime. The cast also included Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the middle, James Worthy on the wing, and head coach Pat Riley on the sidelines. Next year, we're gonna win it again. The architect of the dynasty was LA's Hall of Fame guard turned executive, Jerry West. Today, you will have a unique opportunity to hear from a panel of former Lakers as they gather to share their reflections on that golden era in franchise history. It's coming up next on NBA Roundtable, the Los Angeles Lakers. When you um, have watched basketball as long as I have, um, I've always had a special attachment to players, and particularly players that played the game like these guys do. And this was probably, in my opinion, by far the greatest teams I've ever seen. Um, the greatest guys, and I can't compliment these people enough. These are the nicest people to work with that I've ever been around in my life. There was tremendous compassion for each other. Uh, going to practice every day was like a game because they were so highly competitive. But everyone knew their role. And I think for anyone who's been a player, been a coach, and have an opportunity to work in the front office, if you ever have a chance in your life to be able to be around a group of people like, like I was around. That's the most special thing uh, you'll ever, ever dream. There's not a day that goes by when somebody mentions basketball that somewhere along the way that these people's names doesn't, doesn't come up in the conversation, but um, unbelievably special group of people. All of them have been really successful and I think it's a tribute not only to them, but um, where they've been in their lives. Yeah, I, I can say the thing that, that meant the most to me coming to this organization to build on what everyone has said is that, you know, we had the talent. There's no question about that. We had great players, and that was only the start of success. You know, without the chemistry and the cohesiveness, it never could have happened. But the thing that, that made it for me uh, was that we, we really liked each other. I mean, this was a team that really... I'm not talking about just teammate-like. I'm talking about like and love each other. We loved each other, but we really liked coming to practice. I mean, the games were easy, and practice was easier because we used to look forward to seeing each other. And we never allowed anybody to go astray. I mean, Magic was great at monitoring everybody. As soon as you walk through the door, if you were in a bad mood, we knew it. And we knew how to... We knew how to gather around you. It, may, it might be my day one day, it might be somebody else's day, but we really, really liked each other. And for me, that, that, that just made all the difference in the world, wanting to come to practice, wanting to you know, sit beside my, my, my teammate, Kurt, sit beside me in the locker room. We have our one-on-one -on -one conversations, and then we'd have, you know, everyone had relationships, but we all were, were one. And, and that's what, what lasts, I mean, Guys play together and then they move on, but with this team, it just is everlasting as is indicative. Here we are today. You, do you ever collect the DVD Band of Brothers? That 10 DVD, DVD set? It's like Band of Brothers. Yeah. When we see each other, it's like we might see each other from 20 feet and you see that <laughs> smile come on your face. That, that bond is, is always there. And uh, going back to Jerry, uh, I've never been able to thank you, but you gave me a chance to play on the championship team after 10 years. Congratulations. Tell me what Bob McAdoo has meant to this team. I tell you, an offensive weapon coming off the bench. A big man who can do it all, run the court, block shots too. He's just a big weapon. I tell you, I'm just glad that we had him on our team. All right, the celebration continues here. I want to thank you personally for that because, you know, I, I had done everything in my career, but you know, I see how guys, I know Patrick Ewing now, um, uh, you look at guys like uh, Carl Malone, they've had great careers, but they never got that championship and you gave me the opportunity to play 
and and get with this band of brothers right here. When you're on a championship team, you you, you bonded yep. forever yes. until they put you six feet under. <laughs> <laughs> that's, hopefully that's, that ain't gonna be for a while. Now. Ho hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I, I always felt one of the most important mm. characteristics of this group all great athletes in, in their own right, and all strong personalities. But they were, each and every one of them was willing to subordinate anything of a personal nature for one common goal, and that was to be successful and win. They'll never forget this moment. For me, it was like I was at home with the family. It was just everybody loved, like you said, everyone just really cared and loved one another. I couldn't understand it because I thought that was sort of an oxymoron because these two used to fight and practice all the time. We <laughs> 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 get the most stitches <laughs> and like high five one another. I got six, I got six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? <laughs>
come in with bad attitudes or, you know, because Kirk never seemed to be happy when he came to practice. <laughs> <laughs> So we had a we had a lot of work in you know, That's because I knew the whole Kirk. practice. No one, gonna, no one was gonna pass me the ball. <laughs> I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed coming to practice, but I knew I had to come to practice with a mean face to, to get ready to go. Nobody cared about scoring the points. Nobody cared about getting their name in the paper. Nobody cared who got the credit. You know what we cared about? Was whooping your butt at the end of the day that we had more points than you had. That was showtime. But I want you to know that this man has a smile that lights up a television screen from here to Bangor, Maine. It was a tight, tight game. And finally, it came down to the last second. I can still see Kareem cutting across the middle. To Kareem, sky hook up, and good! Lakers win! I'm running over there, you know, full speed. I'm jumping up, I'm, I'm choking him. Yeah, 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 yeah! And Magic Johnson is out there celebrating like they just won the NCAA championship. He turns so serious. Say, Bob. We got 81 more games. Quit choking me. <laughs> you know, we had great leadership um, in the front office, and we obviously had great leadership on the bench. But the one common thread, because I don't think everybody here played that one stretch from the first championship in, was it 80? Before the one in 72 and the last one, there's really only one common thread, and that's Madison. Magic Johnson. And, and just, you know, the way we're sitting right now, when Irvin came in here, where did he sit? You know, he sat right there in the middle because that's second nature to him, to be, to be right in the middle of it and to be a leader and to have the game or the conversation uh, revolve around him. And, and to me, that's the one common thread that made this team very different on the court was you. from midcourt made a 43-foot bounce pass. Woo! How did he sing? Magic introduced me to a style of game that I, I still yeah. just wake up sometime and I'm, you know, I'm on the wing and <laughs> I, I, that, that's all I have is my memories because I can't run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, but Showtime to me, I was born again with Showtime because it was a it was a style of game that was disciplined, extremely disciplined. People don't understand. It was a disciplined style, but it was a beautiful thing that to to be on the floor with what I consider the best player. People ask me all the time, who would you rather play with? Bird, Jordan, Kobe. And I said, that's not even a question. I want to play with Mr. Showtime because definitely made me better and and made that whole city you know yeah. it's fun to watch. that whole city showtime and I mean a leader to be so selfless you know to be around a guy who I mean he set the example he put winning first and you know he would he would he would get on you but you could say things to him I mean I've, I've been around some great players and watched a lot of great players but just to be so selfless this was 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 really unique and, uh, and inspirational, very inspirational. Showtime was started with our team defense. We were the best team defense mm -hmm. in all the NBA. Mm -hmm. We had, we, we could don't go. Get credit for it. No, no, we don't get credit for it. Our team defense was better than anybody. I mean, because we knew what we had to do. We knew your top two scores or your top three plays. We're gonna take somebody away. Mm -hmm. And then, then once we got the ball. <clears throat> I had wingmen. And the thing that made our break in Showtime so beautiful was, you want to dunk? <laughs> Clever, Jane Worthy. You want a finger roll? Clever, Jane Worthy. You want to dunk? Byron Scott, Baby B. You want the three? He can fade to the corner and three you to death. You got Cooper, Ali Hoop. Go get it, Cooper Loop. Bam. <laughs> You want Kurt barreling down the middle. <laughs> Watch out now, I gotta wait till he stop just on a dime, because you would travel if I do it too much work. <laughs> but we had, what I'm telling you, showtime was Kurt, Mitch getting the ball, outletting it. 
Mm -hmm. Bob McAdoo trailing, shooting a jumper, mm -hmm. getting a dunk or getting a layup. Jamal Wilkes, I can throw it any kind of way. I can roll it to Jamal. He gonna catch it. It could be too high. It could be on the slide right, left. He gonna catch it and finish. Look at Magic. <laughs> he won't let him up. So everybody played a role in Showtime. You're giving me the credit. I'm only the orchestrator of it. But if I don't have James Worthy finishing, there's no Showtime. There's no break. And I don't have B, you on the wing with him then I can't do the trick because it won't work. I need two wingmen. I need a trailer. And that's what Showtime was about. All right, here's Magic getting another rebound and a miss by Kelly. Magic out of the back court. Magic left side to Kareem, slam dunk. Look at Magic. Magic gets another assist. Is he turning him on here? I've never seen a greater performance by the young man. And then tell him what we used to talk about before the game when we said what we had to be up. That, then they'll understand what Showtime was about. Yeah, every, every now and again, it, you know, out of 82 games, uh, there was about 20 games that Irv come up to me and say, B, you know, I don't want to play this fourth quarter. <laughs> Ice them up. Yep, we don't want to play this fourth <laughs> quarter. So what that meant was Showtime was really in effect. We're going to come out here and jump on you for three straight quarters, blow you out, and then we're going to sit down, we're going to put our ice on, and we're going to let the, guys, the other guys play and finish the game. And that was his whole way of just saying, tonight we mean business. And the last thing Showtime was about, nobody cared about scoring the points. Nobody cared about getting their name in the paper. Nobody cared who got the credit. You know what we cared about? Was whooping your butt at the end of the day that we had more points than you had. That was Showtime. You know, I watched Irvin Johnson um, when he first started playing. And the one thing I've always said about him, I said, when he was born, somebody sprinkled a little extra gold dust on this man. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, as I said, I've seen a lot of credible players, and um, um, I'm not sure in my lifetime that some people are born, and it's almost like they're put here for a reason. And you know, I've watched Irvin Johnson um, when he first started playing. And the one thing I've always said about him, I said, when he was born, somebody sprinkled a little extra gold dust on this man. <laughs> and I've watched him um, go through a lot in his life. And um, there was a period where I was so concerned about him personally. And basketball um, was not even an issue. Um, he's someone that you know I've admired um, forever, and um, every time I see him, um, you know I see this smile. He's like the Pied Piper. He walks through a crowd, and here they come. And when you have somebody like that on your team as a leader, um, you don't have to worry about going on a losing streak. I don't care how your, how your players are. He, he's going to pick everybody up. For me, it was um, a great thrill to, to watch him play. And more importantly, it's a great thr thrill to, for me to see the success he's had in his life today. Uh, I'm so happy for him. But more importantly, I think the, the love he shows for you guys, when he could be above you, he never showed that. And uh, the unique man, we had a unique coach and really some really unique players and people who work together very closely. And, and to be a part of that has been it has been my life. Well, you're the architect, and you always brought in what we needed. Well, we, um, were, we were fortunate. <laughs> we were fortunate. The Lakers are known around the world because of what Jerry was able to uh, do as a player and as a, the, the general manager, the vice president, the titles that he, he, he held. But it's, it's great for me. Um, we haven't had this much fun, and I don't know how long, just laughing. Uh, the hugs and uh, I often tell people it's not the it's two things that you miss when you retire it's the competitiveness and the camaraderie of the guys and, and the friendships and I tell you